Okay. Doing the last little part of section 3.1 here, the quadratic models, which basically mean word problems. Here's just something to keep in mind. Now let's look at an example. Take a second to copy this one down. This function gets used a lot, so I want you to have it in your notes. Okay, when you're looking at this, just notice how many variables do we have in that formula? Well, we've got t, we've got v sub o, we've got s sub o. And that's it. So to find any one of them, we've got to know the other two. All right, so just kind of keep that in mind. Here's part a. How many seconds does it take for the ball to reach its maximum height? Now, we're throwing it straight up. So it's going to go straight up, straight down. But if I exaggerate that just a little bit, my drawing could look something like that. Maximum height is going to be right there where the dot is. This is parabolic. That means that's where the vertex is. The vertex is either going to be at the very top or the very bottom. Here, this one's at the very top. So what do I do? This thing up here has coordinates h and k from last week, right? So how do I find h? Let's, let's do our formula first here. So I've got s sub t equals negative 16 t squared. Now what do I know from back here? I don't know the maximum height yet. That's what I'm looking for. I do know the initial velocity and the initial height. So this is going to be plus initial velocity, 112 t plus 75 feet. Well, what's b in that thing? What's B? Well, it's this thing right here. So I'm looking for H, really. So that's going to be negative B over 2A. That's from last week. Equals negative 112 uh, over 2 times negative 16. I get that, and my negative signs are going to cancel. So what's 112 divided by 32? I'm going to get 3.5. Now, if we looked at that as a graph here, my x-axis is time, my y-axis is height. So as time goes on, 
Now remember, this is not a graph of where the ball is. It's a graph of the height. So it's going to do something like this and then come back down. So there's my vertex. So really I'm looking for that vertex. The H value is time in this problem. So there's my answer. 3.5 seconds. And my drawing's not completely accurate. I should have started it up here someplace. Because it's starting from a height of 75 feet. Right? But there's the answer to the first part. <coughs> Let's look at part B. How high does it get? Well, looking back at the drawing again, the vertex is at H and K. I found H. How do I find K? It's just the function at H. So I've got minus 16. Oh, that's, we know that now. 3.5 squared plus 112 times 3.5 plus 75. Okay, calculator time. Here's what I'm getting. good in other words we're just plugging that 3.5 into our original equation and so geometrically this vertex has an x value of 3.5 and a y value of 271 that's all I'm saying but word problems kind of confuse things sometimes so make sure you know what they're asking you for. We're good so far. Could they ask us something different? Well, yeah. Or 75 feet. I'm just making my sketch here. So it starts off at 75 feet. At some point, it gets up to 200. I can do better than that. And from this point to this point, it's above 200. So there's a time interval that the ball is higher than 200 feet. But we know the zenith up there, the vertex, is at 271. Now, if we didn't already know that, we could be talking about a problem where it never gets to 200 feet, which means we would have no solution, if that makes sense. But we know it gets to be at least 200 feet because it gets higher than that. All right, so it's, it looks like we need, we need this time right here, and we need this one right here. So it's an interval. 
of our x values. Okay. Well, this becomes an inequality. So I'm going to take my original thing. I'm going to say negative 16 t squared plus 112t plus 75 is greater than 200. So I get my 200 brought across. So I've got negative 16 t squared plus 112 t minus 125 is bigger than zero. I'm looking at that. I've got negative 16 and 125 and 112. We could try the AC method and see if that'll factor. Or we could just go right to the quadratic formula and just plug those values in and see what we get. And I think that'd make more sense in this case. So I've got T equals negative uh, 112 plus or minus the square root of 112 squared minus 4AC. All of that's being divided by 2 times A, which is negative 16. Let's take a minute and see what we get. Okay, so here's the two values that I'm coming up with. Now then, with inequalities, we've got to say, well, what makes that true or false? So, technically, I've got to take those values, get a number line, and say, here's my 1.39 seconds, here's my 5.61 seconds. and then pick values to test. Now, let's think about this. On this one, does less than 1.39 make any sense at all? Because we know it took three and a half seconds to get all the way up to the top. Less than 3.9 would be out this direction. So let's just test to see if that middle part works. Let's see if it makes it true. Let's pick a value between 1.39 and 5.61. What do you all want to do? Three? Okay, so I'm going to plug that into my original inequality up here. So I'm going to say negative 16 times 3 squared plus 112 times 3 plus 75 plus 75. Is that greater than 200? That's the question we're asking. So negative 16 times 9 plus, that's going to be 336. <coughs> Plus 75, is that greater than 200? So this is going to be negative 144 plus 336 plus 75, greater than 200. So we've got 336 plus 75. equals 411 411 minus 144 is that greater than 200 yeah it is so we know that this interval right here works we could test all three of them but what we're going to find out is this one doesn't and this one doesn't 
So it's not a disjoint kind of thing. It's not a union kind of thing. So what's our answer? Well, between 1.39 and 5.61 seconds. We're, we're looking for this interval right here. Then we go back and say, this, are those numbers reasonable? Well, if it takes three and a half seconds to get all the way up here, is it reasonable that to get to 200 feet, it takes 1.39 seconds? Yeah. If it takes three and a half seconds to get to the very top, is it reasonable that it's still bigger than 200 when it gets to 5.61 seconds? Yeah, that's reasonable. If, if we were getting something over here, like four, <laughs> well, no, that's not reasonable. So always just go back when you get these word problems, say, does that even make sense in the context of the problem? So that's talking about that interval. Let's see what else I could say. When will it hit the ground again? Well, here's our original equation. What are we looking for? Well, this value out here. We know what that is. We're looking for time. So how high is it going to be when it hits the ground? Zero. So I plug a zero in here. This is T. Let me just write that whole thing again, because that didn't. So I got 0 equals negative 16 T squared plus 112 T plus 75. So we're back to the uh, quadratic formula again. So T over 2 times negative 16. So from the calculator, I'm getting these two answers. That's quadratic. Are those both solutions? Yeah, except this is a word problem. Please notice that second one, the negative 0.62 seconds. What does that mean? That means it was on the ground 0.62 seconds before we threw it. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense in the context of this problem. So we mark that one out. There's our answer right there. Is that reasonable in light of what we know? That took three and a half seconds for it to get to the very top. Does it make sense it would take a little over seconds, seven seconds, seven and a half seconds to get to the ground? Yeah, that's reasonable. It's worth it just to take a second just to say, am I getting some ridiculous answer from the calculator? Here's my second example. Now, technically, my drawing, I shouldn't put this top part on there. I should take that off. It's more like that because the river is the boundary up there. So there's the way it really is set up. 
So it looks like he's going to make two little corrals or something. But what's important is these three links here, this one, this one, and this one are all X. And he has 600 feet of fence in all. Okay, so there's the setup. Let's see what part A asks us to find. In terms of X, how long is the remaining piece of fence? In terms of X, how long is the remaining piece of fence? Well, if we go back and look at the drawing, how much is he used up to do those three, three little vertical strips of fencing there? X plus X plus X, that's three X he's used up. Yeah? Well, what's left? He started with 600, he used up three X worth. That's what's left. 600 minus 3x. So we've got, in terms of x now, it's this. And you could just check that real fast in your mind. Is 600 plus, sorry, is 600 minus 3x plus the 3x he used, is that equal 600? Yeah, yeah, that's reasonable. Now we want to write a function that represents the total area. So we get to come up with the quadratic equation here. Well, I know from my drawing that there's the river. This is x and this is 600 minus 3x. So how do I get the area? I just multiply them. So area equals f of x equals, I just multiply those together, so I've got x times 600 Minus 3x in it, not x. And so I've got 600x minus 3x squared. I'm going to go ahead and write it in standard form. So I've got negative 3x squared plus 600x. Okay, so there's my... There's my equation. What do we have to know? How do you get the area of a rectangle? All right, that's part B. Let's look at C. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this by the way. Okay, we get to C. What dimensions would give us an area of twenty two thousand five hundred square feet? There's my formula. So now I know what the area is, so I'm going to put in 22,500 equals negative 3x squared plus 600x. I'm going to write in standard form, so I've got negative... 3x squared plus 600x minus, I'm going to bring that 22,500 across. I've got that. Double check my math.
Could I use the AC method? Yeah, maybe, but it might not factor. So I'm thinking quadratic formula. And I'm also looking at this. I'm, I'm seeing the 3 and the 600, and I'm wondering if I can divide 3 into 22,500. As it turns out, I can. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 3. So my negative 3's cancel, so I've got x squared minus 200x plus, because these two negatives cancel, here and here, 7,500 equals 0. And so I, I know on a calculator it doesn't make that much difference, but smaller numbers. Let's see what we get. All right, so I'm getting those two values right there. So here comes the question. Is my answer 50 and 150? It says, what dimensions would give an area of 22,500 feet squared? Some people say, yeah. What have we just found here? Two possible values for x. Let's go back and look at the drawing. All we did was find this x right here could be either 50 or 150. Do we know this dimension down here yet? No, we don't. It's, it's one in the dimensions. So I have to go back over here and say, all right, if x is 50, then what's my other side? So I've got to say 600 minus 3 times that 50 to get that bottom part. Okay, so one set of dimensions is 50 by 450. There's dimensions. There's one set of dimensions. And I've got to do something similar when x is 150, because we've got two possibilities. So I've got 600 minus 3 times 150 equals 600 minus 450 equals 150. So our second set of dimensions is 150 by 150. I think you'll find if you... On the first one, multiplied 50 times 450, you'll get that 22.5. If you multiply 150 times 150, it's not a 6, then you'll get 22.5. Okay, so watch out. You always got to go back and say, did I really answer the question? Or did I just do a lot of math for nothing? Last little part here. What is the maximum area? Now we're talking quadratics. What's the giveaway here? Maximum. I know that for a parabola, the vertex is either the maximum or it's the minimum. It's either the highest point or the lowest point. And so what are we looking at here, really? If these are my x values here, then what's my y-axis? It's area, isn't it? 
and there reaches a certain point, we just found that there's going to be a maximum area up here someplace. So I need to find out where. That's going to be an X value. And then I need to find out how high is it. Well, that means this vertex, the maximum value, has coordinates what? H and K. So how do I find H? Negative B over 2A. Well, what's, what's our equation? Let's go back and find that thing. Here it is right here, down at the very bottom. So there's our equation. What's B? Six hundred. Got minus six hundred. A is minus three. So I've got negative six hundred over negative six. My negatives cancel. So a hundred. So that's what H is. In other words. When x equals 100, we're at the highest point of this parabola. When x equals 100, so right here, because h is 100 up here. So to find k, I've got to plug that value into our equation. So I've got negative 3 times 100 squared. plus 600 times 100. In other words, I'm finding k. What's the y value when x is 100? All right, so I've got 100 squared is 10,000. Six hundred times a hundred is sixty thousand. So I've got minus thirty thousand plus sixty thousand leaves me thirty thousand. I know K up here is 30,000. When X is 100, I've got an area of 30,000, and that's going to be the maximum. Now, think about what we did. We took some of the stuff we did last week with the H and K, finding the vertex, the vertex formula, and we just applied that to word problems. In each case, we had quadratics that had a maximum in both of these cases. But if you know how to find the vertex, you've got that part answered.